that life might also have been present. Only a meter or so square, no larger than a beach towel. It too is 3.8 billion years old. This rock was also part of an ancient seabed, but it is the black band which fascinates Minnick Rosing. This is a layer of fossilized carbon which he believes might be the earliest evidence of life. Under the microscope, tiny black grains can be seen. These possibly are grains of carbon, the building blocks of life. If so, there may have been tiny microorganisms drifting in the water that were alive, taking in nutrients, reproducing and then dying and dropping slowly to the ocean floor. When the carbon was deposited those billions of years ago, the thin straight lines on the rock show it was undisturbed, proof that this was the bottom of a deep ocean, and the thickness indicates that already life was plentiful. This is not the emergence of life. It, it cannot be because we have all this black color and that means that there was very efficient life that could make a lot of carbon and this life must have been very sophisticated. So life must have been had had a long prehistory and one could speculate that probably life formed on Earth maybe 4.3 billion years ago when the oceans formed as, and, and the conditions for life were present life could have emerged at that time and uh, definitely by 3.8 billion years ago life had reached the level of sophistication that allowed it to live in the water and produce a lot of carbon so it was highly advanced life at this time. For these microorganisms, the prerogative was simply to survive. But the challenges to life were daunting. The early solar system was still a violent place. Asteroids come hurtling out of space, attracted by the greater size of the planet. And on the face of the Earth today, we can see the scars of recent collisions. This crater in Arizona is well known. It's the Barringer meteorite crater and was gouged from the surface only 50,000 years ago. crater is huge, 1.2 kilometers across, just under a mile, and it was thought that the size of the meteor must have been the same. So perhaps buried in the ground was a fortune in iron and nickel. In the early 1900s, the Standard Iron Company was formed by Daniel Barringer to dig out the perceived wealth. When my grandfather came up this ridge and looked at it, he imagined that the object that made this hole was at least as big as the bottom diameter of the crater, which is, again, more than half a kilometer. He thought this would be millions and millions of tons of nickel iron, and it would be commercially immensely valuable that he could make millions of dollars here. The mining venture lasted 27 years, and in today's money cost around $10 million. But nothing of any value was found. But while the mining venture gained nothing except a useless shaft, there was to be a winner after all. It was science. In 1928, a paper was published which concluded that the mass of the meteor was far smaller than the size of the crater. Further mining was called off. And shortly after, Daniel Barringer died of a heart attack. I think I could have easily made the same mistake because it's such a large hole. And it's intuitively, it seems like it would have had to be a huge rock that would have made it. In fact, the meteorite which caused this crater was no larger than the perimeter fence around the mine shaft. Science learned it was the force that was as critical as the size of the object. But about four billion years ago, the Earth was hit by a massive space intruder, 10,000 times larger and a trillion times heavier than the rock which grazed the Earth in Arizona.
At Stanford University in the United States, Dr. Kevin Zanley of NASA and Dr. Norman Sleep from the university are studying the impacts of meteorites on Earth. But first, they must look at the moon. You'd like to look at it pretty early, so you get nice shadows. It's also pretty nice to start with On the Earth, the evidence of the very earliest asteroid strikes have been weathered away by erosion or lost by the tectonic movements of the Earth's crust. Let's see if we can orient it the same way. Whoa, where is everything? But the moon has been stable since its creation over four billion years ago, so craters are there from that long distant past. By looking at these craters, they hope to estimate the number of times the early Earth might have been hit. It is far larger, its gravitational attraction far stronger, and they estimate that our planet was hit 25 times more often. Nobody is uh, steering the asteroids that are going to hit, and uh, the Earth, uh, being bigger, uh, just happens to get hit more often. So what we do is we count the big craters on the moon, and then we uh, scale up to the much larger size of the Earth, and we find that the Earth was hit by asteroids as large as 500 kilometers across at the same time that the moon was being hit by asteroids that are 100 or 200 kilometers across. This is an impression of the relative sizes. The largest is 500 kilometers. That's over 300 miles across. Earth may have been hit as many as six times by an asteroid this size. You have a 500 kilometer object moving at 20 kilometers a second, stopping in 20 seconds, delivering all of its energy in doing so, and you produce an enormous explosion. The amount of energy that you that is released in this event is more than enough to evaporate the world's oceans. A massive asteroid from outer space heads straight for Earth. It's as large as the one that impacted over four billion years ago. This computer simulation has been made with the scientific advice of geophysical experts to show the effects if the impact were to happen today. The asteroid's diameter is larger than the main island of Japan. Even though it is moving at over 720,000 kilometers an hour, that's almost 450,000 miles an hour, the asteroid appears eerily slow because of its size. The actual impact happens in the Pacific Ocean, just under a thousand miles south of Japan. The crust of the Earth is peeled away like an orange skin by what is called the Crest Tsunami. Even the deepest part of the Pacific Ocean looks like a thin film. Huge chunks of debris the size of city blocks.